Hey everyone, it's almost spring turkey season, so we wanted to do a video on broadhead selection for these guys because there's a lot more choices for turkeys, mainly because you have more shot placement options. What I mean by that is, for a deer, for example, you only wanna shoot a deer in the heart and the lung, so in that shoulder, chest cavity area is where you're aiming. But on a turkey, you have the heart and lungs as an option and you have a lot of angles that you can access the heart and lungs from because they're a smaller animal. And then you also have a head or neck shot which creates more opportunities for different things. And the parameters for selecting a broadhead for a turkey are very different than for a deer. So like for turkey, you don't necessarily want a pass through. Two holes is of course excellent. But an arrow that stays into the turkey will kind of help prevent it from flying away. You know, even if a fatally hit turkey can take flight, they're not gonna leave a blood trail for you to follow them. And then it can become really hard to find them because they blend in so well. So an arrow that stays in can be beneficial versus you know, when we're deer hunting, we want a complete pass through to open it up and that'll leave us a much better blood trail. So I'm gonna sit Mr. Jake down. Well, okay. And now we're gonna start talking about some broadhead options. If you're shooting a compound bow, and let's say you're shooting 50 pounds or better, um, and you have a draw length that is above 26 inches, you wanna probably sh consider shooting a mechanical because um, wider is typically better. So here, I have a mechanical broadhead. I'm gonna try and not cut my fingers off as I open it up for you. So a mechanical broadhead, the blades are closed when you shoot them, and then they open up like this on impact. So you can get a much wider cut with a uh, mechanical broadhead, and they are uh, a little bit easier to tune, and so if you're, if you're new, to, uh, new to archery, you're new to bow hunting or not 100% sure on your tune, mechanical broadhead might be the way to go for you. But they do uh, take energy away as it enters because it takes energy to open up those blades. And so you're not gonna get as much penetration. But as I said earlier, that's not always a bad thing with turkeys. Uh, so, but you wanna make sure that you still have enough to access those organs because even though turkeys are small, their feathers, um, are hard to penetrate. They're, they're real thick, they're real dense, and they absorb energy really well. So that's also something to consider, which is why if you're shooting a traditional bow or a compound bow with a lower draw weight, you know, a fixed blade, it would be my choice. Now I've shot turkeys with both mechanicals and fixed blades with both compound bows and traditional bows. And I've, you know, with a 50 pound recurve bow, and a pretty standard, you know, two blade with bleeders have not gotten complete pass throughs before. So you need, uh, you still need a fixed blade broadhead for if you're shooting with a recurve bow. But there are wider broadheads on the market that give you a little bit more forgiveness for a shot placement, create a little bit more tissue damage, and they're a great option. So like this one I'm holding here, so you have ones that typical uh, fixed blade broadhead might be an inch, inch and a quarter, but you can go to inch and a half and even pretty close to uh, two inches wide. Granted, those wider broadheads can be uh, more difficult to get to fly properly. So just keep that in mind. So compound with you know a uh, long enough draw length and above 50 pounds, consider shooting a wide mechanical if you're shooting below 50 pounds with a compound or a traditional bow, you know, a, a fixed blade or a wider fixed blade might be the ticket for you. And then you have a whole nother segment of broadheads, which are made specifically for bow hunting turkeys, and especially ones that um, are meant for head or neck shots. So these are the ones that have uh, blades, uh, typically four blades, and instead of being swept back they they jut straight out and are pretty long you know they're they go by names like the 
gobbler guillotine would be a really common one. We'll, we'll throw up some pictures for you just so we can refresh your memory on what those would look like. And if you're committed to shooting only headshots, that might be a, a good option for you. And then there's, a, there's another segment of turkey broadheads that are fixed blades, but are meant to reduce penetration. As we mentioned earlier, there are benefits to not getting a pass through with a turkey. And then there's, so you have broadheads that are designed so you have the re reliability of a fixed blade, but uh, they slow down your penetration by using things like forward facing barbs uh, or like deep serrations that will catch on the, on everything uh, as it's passing through and will slow down that penetration. And again, we'll throw some photos up for you so you can see what those look like. All right, so now you can see that there are a lot of options when it comes to selecting a broadhead for turkeys. Which one is the best for you? There's a lot of personal preference in here. We've given you some parameters to help you make that decision. Ultimately, it depends on your experience and uh, the type of shot placement that you're gonna go for, as well as your, your equipment and all of that. So keep all those things in mind as you're choosing your broadheads for turkey season. And remember, shot placement is the most important thing. So study that really well and good luck this spring.